Well, good evening, adventurers. How are you? And welcome to another week. And happy Monday. Thank you for stopping in. It's another one of our Slant Alpha adventures. I don't know if we technically qualifies as Slant Alpha tonight. We're not navigating as we usually do through our normal VOR with DME. We're navigating with something even more old school, if you can believe it or not. It's a four-course radio range beacon, which uh, was was kind of the predecessor to VORs. It, it was it was still a directional radio signal that you could track, but instead of having a, a universal course that you could set to whatever radio you wanted, you had four courses to choose from. Uh, not necessarily north, south, east, and west. They rotated these things uh, to create airways out of them. We'll show you the charts in just a few. But... Uh, but yeah, you basically were locked into uh, one of the four courses that uh, that it was erected with, and uh, and those those four courses, of course, are at 90 degree angles to one another. And I'll show you again. We'll show you the charts in just a few. I'm not probably explaining it too well. I do want to take just a moment uh, to um, comment on the the sad news of the weekend. Uh, you guys may have heard if you follow the social media that uh, our furry co-pilot number one passed away over the weekend, and. Uh, you know, of course, she was uh, kind of a regular on the stream up until about a month ago when we moved to the new house here. Uh, the new Slant Alpha studio is kind of where the the, the cat can get to, but the dogs were really not uh, able to, to pop in. Uh, but prior to a month ago, they were all three um, furry co-pilots were regular, uh, made regular appearances on the stream. And uh, so she was definitely a big part of of, uh, of the, the family here and, and the Slant Alpha family as well. And so we're definitely going to miss her, but uh, just wanted to kind of touch on that, get, out, get that out of the way, and I uh, appreciate all those who uh, stopped into the social media and, and, and gave some kind words for her. So, um, so yeah, this will be the first stream without her, but uh, we'll do this little little, little flight uh, kind of in her honor, and, uh, and yeah, we're definitely going to miss her around here. So um, Anyway, let's get back to what we were talking about. This is... Um, this is a, an add-on. If I can find the, uh, if I can find the website. Let's go X Plane Four Course. Probably that's enough. I would think. Yep, here we are. The LF Range Experience by Bob Denny, and he's supposed to be stopping in the stream tonight. We should be seeing him uh, stop in and kind of check things out. So this is. Uh, uh, a, a brief overview of how it works, and uh, you'll see these. And this, we're going to start right from this location here. Whoops, thought I'd be zooming in on that. Um, but they put up these four towers, and you tune two radios. You have two radios you can tune, and the way it works. Maybe if we kind of go in on uh, where we're going to be starting from down here at uh, Elko, the lower left hand. These are massive high high density images, so my computer's kind of struggling to to manipulate them a little bit. Kind of laggy. Uh, but we're going to join this course here. And you see, like I said, there's four courses on each of these maps. And where you are in relation, I'll tell you what, let's look at the Crater Lake one. I think it might do a bit, bit of a better job of illustrating. Yeah, there we go. Now we got to scroll this down to where we're going to be. It should be the lower side of this thing. We're coming from Battle Mountain. Okay, so here we go. As you tune in, the NDB essentially we're we're kind of kind of tuning it on the NDB frequency. There's actually a little add-on that gives us two NDBs. There's the you can it's a little off to the side there, but uh, there's a number two and there's number one. Um, but we'll tune this frequency and we'll be listening for um, either. A Morse code N, which is that, or a Morse code A, which is that. Actually, I'll draw it even better because they off they play offset to one another. All right. So there's the N, and there's the A, and you can see on this chart it indicates which side is which. All right. On this side, it's the A is here, and is here. If you're coming from this direction, the N is here. So basically, they play both the A and the N at the same time. If you're in this quadrant, you'll hear more of the N. If you're in this quadrant, you'll hear more of the A. 
If you're in this quadrant, you'll hear more of the A. And if you're in this quadrant, you'll hear more of the A. If you're right on track, right down that, that line there, you will hear both perfectly blended so that when you add them together, they are one continuous tone. So that's how you know you're on course, spelled banana. <laughs> that's how you know you're on course. If you're, uh, if you're dead center tracking this 298, which I'll, I'll get back, or 228 rather, um, I'll get back to that in just a moment. Then you'll hear the, the perfect blend of the uh, dots and dashes over top of one another, and they'll fill in this nice, perfect, solid tone. If you're up in this N area at all, then you'll hear this first long tone will be dominant. If you're down here in this A area at all, then you'll hear the first, uh, first short tone and the, the last long tone will be dominant. Believe me, I'll, I'll kind of... <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll definitely clue you guys into what's what when we get flying because you'll be able to tell um, the volumes are, are kind of a scale the, the, if you're slightly off course the end will be slightly louder and you might not even be able to tell but if you get way off course then the end will definitely be louder and the A will definitely start to fade and you'll be able to tell that you're hearing more of this long tone first than the uh, and the long tone at the end. It's, it's really neat. It, it gets annoying. I'm, I'm, the problem is you're listening to beeping sounds all night. I don't know how well this is going to translate over stream. It's very intriguing. It's kind of a, it's going to be a cerebral stream. Uh, on here's Surrey Co-Pilot number three. You're going to mess with my rudder pedals. Get away, cat. Um, so it's going to be a cerebral stream, but I don't know how fun it's going to be to listen to that beeping all night long. But uh, what, I'll, what I'll do is I'll play it in bursts, and then we'll make a course correction, and then we'll play it again and see how it's changed and then we'll kind of uh, we'll kind of go that way. Now the other catch is these charts are from 1947. The magnetic deviation has changed by about 5 or 6 degrees since that time. It's been uh, what uh, 50 70 years since this chart was made and yeah, so uh, the magnetic poles change over time and the magnetic deviation changes and that's why you get runways at some airports that get renumbered every so often because the magnetic a heading changes over time and they you know if, if a runway 9 was a 093 and now it's a 098 well they're gonna now call that runway 10 happened down at uh, Princess Juliana not too long ago um, but anyway so we'll have to take these numbers with a grain of salt and we're gonna go plus or minus five degrees on those but the main thing is to be listening to this tone and listen to this blend of the uh, Morse code N is in November and the Morse, Morse code A is in Alpha and listen to that blend into a straight solid tone that's, that's got uniform uh, intensity throughout. So we'll talk more about that as we get up to, uh, to altitude and can uh, give you some more concrete examples. We are flying from Elko to Reno. This, if you look at that site, that, um, that xplane.org site that's got the plug-in on it, uh, this is kind of the example flight that uh, Bob gives in this description. It's pretty straightforward. You're going to take off from Elko. We're going to join. Now, I filed it. This is the modern airway system. I filed it as Victor 32 to Battle Mountain and Victor 6 down to Lovelock and, uh, and then beyond down to Reno. That's pretty close. I only put that in there because I needed the mileage to... to calculate fuel and time. Uh, obviously the path that we're going to fly is going to be pretty close to that, but it's going to, these, these radio stations are not exactly where the modern VORs are, so it's going to be slightly different. I've put that in my flight plan remarks. I don't think at the moment we've got, well we got Oakland Center on now, we didn't uh, a little while ago, but we don't have, uh, we don't have uh, air traffic control on VATSIM where we're departing from, but uh, when we get in closer to Oakland we'll just let them know. Navigating via four-course radio range, route will deviate slightly from that which was filed. So hopefully that's enough to let them know what we're doing. And like I said, we don't have air traffic control from our departure, so we shouldn't have any issues there. Let's just look at uh, where VATS by go. Oh, and Northwest Orient might be joining us. But yeah, Reno is definitely down here where uh, Oakland is now online. And so we may... Uh, May have some interesting uh, comments to them to let them know what in the heck we're doing. The Northwest Orient said, I just filed VFR and I'll, I'll call up when I get close to Reno. Yeah, I'd consider doing that too. 
Uh, didn't know. The weather looked pretty favorable. It looks like uh, scattered clouds or a few clouds uh, at intermediate layers, and then the uh, arena looks like it's pretty clear. So that was, I considered doing that too, and that way we would be pretty much free to go where, uh, wherever we would want to go. But uh, the, the route that I put in, the modern route that I put in, is not actually that far off. So that's what we'll go with. All right, let's go ahead and get this fired up. The other exciting news about tonight is it's the updated version of the Arrowworks. Now, they've, they've, they haven't updated all of the features they were talking about. They've, uh, they've kind of, they're starting to do them piecemeal. They had a little bit of a setback. They lost a backup and had a little bit of a setback. Uh, but they've updated for tonight, they've updated the fuel system, and they've updated the auto mix system, which was which is very exciting. So it's changed some things in the checklist. Dakota Dreaming is here. Dakota Dreaming, and he says, I'm here, fly that LF range. I'm assuming, Dakota Dreaming, that I know who you are, and you are our friend who has been corresponding with us and helping us get it set up with this thing. Uh, so, so, Bob, if that is indeed you, we are pleased to have you aboard. And, uh, guys, if you have questions that I'm not able to answer about this LF range navigation thing, which I'm going to be kind of fumbling through as we go. But uh, if you have questions, the Code of Dreaming will be uh, able to answer them. Questions about the plug-in in particular. All right, let's give this thing a shot, shall we? Let's, uh, let's get the airplane fired up. Uh, I've already set the fuel load. We've set 2,287 pounds of fuel for starting. And let's jump back into the airplane. We'll get the battery switch on. Uh, let's see, we've got the uh, nav and beacon lights that can come on. Uh, fuel tanks can go to mains, and it now actually matters. It's not just left aux. We've actually got to set left main on this tank, and we've got to set right main on this tank. So that's exciting that we actually have to do this more realistically now. So those are set. Cows can go to open. That is uh, counterclockwise over there on the sink handles on the right, far right side of the cockpit. So those are now open. Uh, props can go to full forward. That's those. Uh, the right-hand engine. Now the mix. I've only got one mix lever, and you can't manipulate these independently. Unfortunately, well, maybe. Yeah, I, I have, was having trouble ma it, manipulating them independently. Uh, I think that click spot is actually for something else. Well, you're not even seeing my mouse cursor. Uh, there is a click spot there, but I don't think it's for the mix lever. But uh, so I've got to move those in conjunction, unfortunately, and that's uh, that's emergency rich. I actually want that into just auto rich, which would be there. So you do you do hear there's a little bit of a click, there's a little bit of a thunk as it goes into position. So those four positions are now, in fact, modeled. It's uh, maybe this view. Idle cut off, auto lean. Auto rich and emergency rich is what you would go into if you were going to uh, to go around, but auto rich would be your standard setting there. And then, uh, like I said, I got to move them in conjunction, so I'm not going to be able to do everything completely realistically as I start just the one engine and then the other. But anyway, Downwind Sim uh, is here, by the way, and uh, says uh, good job on the LF range. Yeah, we will definitely see. It's it's a well well modeled little plug-in I was playing with, and hopefully we'll get to do a complete flight with it tonight. Anyway, where was I? Uh, mix, auto rich, fuel pump. Okay, so yeah, we'll get the number two started. That's um, fuel pump, magnetos, prime it, clear it, and start. I had to readjust all my views, by the way. The update to the model did change my uh, my view locations. All right, so the number two is up and running now. We got. Uh, Oil pressure has come up. Uh, we assume that the fuel pressure, the fuel pressure is up artificially because the electric pump is running. But when we've assuming, we're assuming that if we've got oil pressure, we've probably got fuel pressure too. We'll kick that off and kick that on, and we can see that the fuel pressure drops, but it is in the normal range there. So we're good with the number two. We've got a good start. Kenny Monsters here says, "What's up, hooligans?" Yeah, we definitely got a few of those here tonight. All right, so we've got the generator on. Yeah, good. We can go ahead and get some electrical power fired up. We've already set the flight plan and updated the progress bar. We can go ahead and check our METAR here at uh, ELCO. If I can get this, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Dot METAR KECO. 
260 at 10 gusting 16, so we will take off to the west. That's mostly down. I think it's a runway 24, so it should be mostly down the center line there. Shouldn't be too big of an issue. <laughs> Dew point negative 04. It's a dry heat, like they say. Uh, altimeter is 3020, so we'll go ahead and get that set. Field elevation here is 5140, so as we set this 3020, go ahead and cross check that it comes up to where it says it does and it's 51 f well, we're showing uh, about 100 feet high so either the METAR might be a little bit old or we're on a higher end of the field but uh, plus or minus 100 I say is usually pretty close if it's way off then you know that uh, either your altimeter is not working or your weather simulation is not working all right, where we leave off here we've got the origin elevation verified we don't have any uh, uh, clearance to obtain on that sim, we will set a squat code of 2200 with mode C on if you don't have a uh, controller for your IFR flight plan departure. They have an ADF tuners will be set as needed. Okay, here's where we're going to... So what I've got, I've got all these... Uh, this is, these are the charts that I downloaded from the xplane.org site. A bunch of them. The ones that we're using tonight are the Great Salt Lake, which is uh, the en route 304. That means Elko radio is on frequency 39 or 1. So we'll go ahead and set that. And I'm probably going to turn that volume down. Not hearing anything on it right now. Probably because we're more, more or less right over top of it. Um, but we'll turn that volume down if we uh, get airborne and realize it's blaring in your ears. And then the next one down the line is Battle Mountain just 281 so we'll go ahead and oh you know why I'm not hearing it hold on I know why I'm not hearing it you gotta get the uh, ADF sounds over here and the marker sounds which I usually turn off all right there you go now you can start to hear and let's turn this one off okay so now we're hearing three nine or one so there's a little bit of a test. Yeah, you hear you hear a little bit of a test where they don't play at the same time. You hear the uh, the identifier of the station, which is uh, whoops, trying to find it on the chart here. So there's the uh, there's the identifier of Elko Radio. Long, short, long, 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 long. And now that pulsing sound, you hear that the the long sound is dominant. So we're on the end side, as I, as I was mentioning before. We're kind of a little bit to the north. We'll need to uh, we need to track southbound after we after we get moving. Oh, Bob's going to join the Discord. Let me get the let me get into the. Uh, Yeah, once you get in, Bob, let me know. I'll get you uh, access to the voice channel. Hey, you here, Will? I am, yes. Nice, okay. Uh, Bob Denny is going to uh, join us as well, so he's on his way in. Okay. All right. So we'll shut that off. We can tell, We can tell again, we're the, the long pulse is dominant, so we're, we're on the end side. We'll go ahead and shut that off for now. Because that will drive you nuts after a little while. Alright, so, Nav and ADF tuners are set. We're going to check our fuel quantity. Again, we're starting with, uh, what did I say? We're starting with 2,287 pounds. That's 381 gallons. We're presuming at the first, at the start, that's going to be evenly divided among our four tanks. So if we've got, uh, let's see, 380 so that's 95 there, 95-ish there, 95 there, 95 there. So 380. So the left main is uh, run is a little bit lower than the rest, or no, the right main is a little lower than the rest because that's what the right engine is running on right now. So we'll rebalance that when we get air, uh, up airborne. But this is cool that this is actually correctly modeled now, and that you see the right main is just a little bit lower because the right right engine has been running for a few minutes. 
anyway, we've got uh, got our, our fuel load set. And uh, then we will go ahead and get ready to start the number one and get flying here. Seatbelt lights are coming on. That means everybody needs to get into their seats and get buckled. Where are we? We are going to get the number one started. The mix, like I said, was already forward because those, those uh, levers work in tandem, unfortunately, on my plane here. Uh, but mix, magnetos, prime it. Oh, fuel pump. Prime it. Clear it. And we got the uh, Northwest Orient one over there running, ready to go. And start it. Ah, got the number one roaring to life. Oil pressure should come up right away. Fuel pressure is artificially high because the uh, electric fuel pump's running. But as long as we're good, we'll go off with the fuel pump, along with the generator. Double check the oil and fuel pressure, everything is good. So we've got a good start on number one. We'll sync our headings. Looks like we're facing 030 exactly. So we'll get this dialed in on, uh, and we'll go that way. Get 030 dialed in on both the DG and the Sperry. And zero it out there. Check in on the Discord. Oh, I'm still working on it, it says. Alright, what's next? Go ahead and check our flight controls. We presume somebody outside will check and make sure that our flight controls move as they're supposed to. But uh, we'll presume that that's been done. And everything is indeed set there. We're ready to roll, guys. Flaps 1 is set, and taxi light can come on. And again, we are at Elko. We're going to depart to 4. We're somewhere in this area here. So we'll head southbound, and then north and east on Alpha, Alpha 1. we got to be careful. There's this uh, the second taxiway to 2-4 that is no longer open. So we need to make sure that we turn right at Alpha 1. And we're on. Are our comms on 122.8? They are. So we'll make our position announcements on that sim unicom frequency, which is universally 122.8 regardless of what's published. All right, guys. I think let's uh, get this thing rolling. Now I'm full left rudder, but I'm really steering with brakes here until we uh, until we get rolling. I would be steering with differential thrust as well, but again, I've only got the one throttle lever, the one uh, mix lever, the one prop lever. Elko traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victors, taxi into runway 24 of Alpha Alpha 1. Elko. That uh, looks like a taxiway marking there. We'll s try and follow that. Again, you'll see my rudder pedals move, but I'm really steering more with the brakes than the rudder. The uh, rudder doesn't do you much good unless you've unless you got wind flowing over it, so it's just kind of out of habit that I do that. The rudders are centered now, and I'm steering with brakes. Unfortunately, the brake pedals are not animated. I wish they were. You can see what I was doing. Elko traffic, Douglas, November 341 Alpha. We'll be following our brother DC3 to runway <laughs> Elko traffic. The gentleman that you just heard, by the way, is our friend Northwest Orient, and he's the author of this beautiful custom livery for my uh, AeroWorks DC3. So thank you very much. I, I know I say that every now and then, but I always feel that it's, it bears repeating because it's awesome to be able to fly the custom colors there. Of course, as I say that, I lose track of where I am and where, which way I'm pointed. <laughs> All right. Bob, once you get in, established in the Discord, let me know in the stream chat, and I've, I've got to give you... Uh... Hey, uh, Rob, looks like uh, Mr. Denny's here. Oh, never mind.
All right, so Bob, you've got the appropriate permissions to join that group flights channel now. Maybe I can, maybe I can move him. Are you there, Bob? So he... I, I think so, possibly. Got you loud and clear, sir. Welcome, welcome. Awesome. Was there anything in my explanation that I completely botched? Not at all. <laughs> we'll see. I'm kind of stuck in the grass here. I gotta get back onto the pavement. I'm getting double audio here. Hang on. I don't know why. Maybe I've got two discords going. You're probably getting it from the discord and from the stream, so I'll stop holding the push to talk when I talk to you, and maybe that'll solve it. All right, we can yeah, look that's, for the. That's it. I'll just turn <laughs> down discord, maybe. I don't know. It's up to you. You're going to get the Discord audio from a slightly delayed. There's a little bit of buffering delay in the stream, but that's okay. All right, I think this is our turn to Alpha 1 here. Uh, I've neglected my taxi out checklist, by the way. We want to check the hydro pressure. Those two white cages over there to the right, they look good. Cows can go into trail mode. No smoking sign will go on. That lets our cabin crew know that we are imminently departing. Yeah, I think I think I had set my viewpoint up a little high. There we go. That's the problem. All right, and we are ready to uh, do our quick run up here. We'll set uh, set the brakes, run the manifold pressure up to 30. Whoops, manifold pressure up to 30, there we go. We'll do our mag check on the right side. You hear him go slightly out of sync, that's okay. Let's mag check down two on the right side. Slightly out of sync is not a problem, 150 RPM drop is tolerable, Less, uh, more than that's a problem, but we're good. Left side, down one, down two, everything is good. You hear them go back into sync, there we are. And then we'll cycle the prop lever down three times and back. Yeah, Bob, I think that's a good call. Turn the Discord down and uh, just listen to the stream narration. All right, we are ready, I believe. Anti-collision, landing, taxi, pito, and fuel pumps. Elko traffic, Douglas, 514 Delta Victors, taking runway 24 for IFR westbound, straight out departure, Elko. It's trying to turn because of the wind here. So I'm trying to hold it straight as we t get onto the runway. No traffic coming. No traffic coming. Uh, temps and pressures look good. Engines are responding symmetrically. Go ahead and set our takeoff power. 45 manifold pressure coming at you. Here it comes. Right, 45 not quite set because of the altitude. Tail's going flying on its own. Hold the level attitude and the plane should basically lift off on its own. There we are. At the flaps one departure, the plane just kind of lifts off at a level attitude once it gets up to uh, the proper speed. That's not really realistic for a non-short field departure, but it's just the way I prefer to uh, handle the plane. You can see we're getting blown off to the left here. 
uh, gear coming up. And as soon as we're through 400 feet, which we'll see in the radio altimeter right there above the prop lever. And then we get flaps, we get trimmed up, we get fuel pumps off, and we get 25 and 40 cent, 25 on manifold pressure, sorry, 25 RPMs and 40 on manifold pressure. So there's our departure sequence done. Now through 4,000 feet, we would turn the no smoking sign off, but we're through 6,000 feet because we started from 5,000 feet. <laughs> All right, sound mix okay, guys? Plane, this plane tends to be a little loud, but uh, we'll knock it down just a little bit there so you guys can hear. Um, Traffic guy, what's far enough? We're taking off runway 2-4, VFR straight out. Alrighty, there he goes behind us. We'll make sure we're... Uh, make sure we're at 25 and 40. And we gotta... Trim it out level and, uh, and gain some airspeed. We're supposed to be climbing at uh, that yellow mark there. But we're low on airspeed because we're high in altitude and low and low on air density. So we've got to make sure we've flying this thing first, and then we'll navigate it. Sound mix was good before. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll put it up another notch. All right. Still continuing to trim down. Now here's where we are going to check and see where we are with relation to this this radio beacon. Let's turn this back on now. So there's the test signal. Now if you guys can hear that, the long pulse at the beginning of that sequence, right here, beginning, beginning. The lung pulse at first seems to be a little bit louder, a little bit, not much. So we're slightly hearing the N a little bit louder than the uh, than the A, I would say. All right, so we'll turn that off. That means if we're if we're hearing the N, then that means we're a little bit too far. Let's see. Is it marked on this one? I don't think it's marked on this one. The solid line the is solid the... The solid line is the... Uh, I'm sorry, the solid line is the... Gotcha, gotcha. So the, yeah, so the solid purple there is on the... Let's see if I can... I'm trying to scroll back, but my Windows is trying to help me. Stop helping me, Windows. So west of Elko, if we're... On the solid purple side, we're, we're too far north, so we, we need to correct to the left here just a touch. We also need to make sure we're keeping that manifold pressure 25 and 40. I think at this point we'll go ahead and do our extended climb power. No smoking sign can come off. And 24 and 37 is the appropriate setting, so we'll knock the RPMs down 100. Manifold pressure's already kind of decayed to 37, so we won't touch that. All right, let's see where we are now. Test tones again. I still feel like that N is slightly dominant. Slightly, slightly, slightly. Oh, Bob's now saying the solid line is on the left of the beam. Hold on. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but as I'm going outbound from Elko, the solid line is on the right. Well, here's how we do it. All right, here's here's we will we will know definitively which is correct. All right, we're going to turn 90 degrees north, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> I 
Oh, the actual solid line of the feather. Okay, so the shaded purple is the alpha side. Is that what you're saying? So we were on about a 2-4. Now we're on about a 3-3, which we're tracking. We're, we're 90 degrees north. We're, we're completely perpendicular to this path because we're just going to radically see within no uncertain terms. The purple is the beam. The solid line is on the November side. Okay, I got you, got you, got you. I got you. Okay, so the, the purple, let's, let's draw this again. See, I like the other charts better, which would actually kind of marks them as uh, alpha and November. It's, it's a little easier to tell on those charts. But what Bob is saying is the, the beam is that whole width there. It's this edge of it with the solid side is the November. And as I go further north, I'm going to the alpha side. So the shaded purple side is the alpha side. The solid purple side is the November side. So what should be happening as I go further north is the opening long pulse should be getting weaker and the ending long pulse should be getting stronger. Let's see if that is the case. Test tones will come first. Yeah, I think that ending pulse is now a little stronger. I think actually we're pretty good on, on course. But I tell you what, let's just keep flying north just as a test. We'll check it again in a minute. I'm just going to keep flying off course to the right because I want to demonstrate that, that alpha pulse getting stronger. Yeah, it, it was subtly, subtly stronger, but I want to demonstrate how... how uh, more exaggerated that gets the further off course you go. We're also coming up on... Uh, I don't want to interrupt you, but I'm hearing two radios or two separate range signals. It's um, very confusing. It doesn't sound normal. Do you have maybe the audio posted through two different routes or something? Somehow, oh, I'm I think... Two yeah, what you might be hearing, what you might be hearing, Bob, is it, um, it's probably coming through the stream directly, and then it's coming through my mic. So let's see if I can do it this way. Hold on a second. I'm just listening to the stream right now because, um, I have, oh yeah. Yeah, so that's what was happening. Was it was um, it was stream now. It sounds totally perfect. Yeah, because I because I had to because I had to mute my mic when I turned it on. <laughs> but yeah, you can you can tell that the alpha tone is definitely stronger. You're going do da do da do da do da. So the farther off course we get to the north, the worse that's going to get. Let's keep let's play it again. Yeah, we're definitely on the alpha side. You can hear the first time through it wasn't quite as exaggerated, but the second time through it, uh, you could definitely tell that alpha pulse was stronger. The end, the tail end of that pattern was stronger. So let's go ahead and get back down on course now. Yeah, with your mic off, it's perfect. You need headphones like the real old time pilots. Well, I've got the headphones, Bob. What I've got is I've got the plane sounds coming through the speaker, and I've got the. Sounds like I'm just about to cross the fan marker. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, the the um, Carlin fan marker. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'm probably way off course. I don't know if I'll hear that or not, but uh, but yeah, I, I did hear that when I was playing around with it the first time. All right, so now to get back onto course, we're going to come back to if it's a two four ish outbound, then a one five is the reciprocal heading, right? 
225 is the perpendicular heading, I should say. Also, we're leveling off at 12,000 feet, so we'll go ahead and get uh, go ahead and get leveled here. Got a few things to do once we get up the cruise. We want to get the cow flaps closed. That's over there. Go ahead and get the no. Uh, I'm sorry, the fasten seatbelt signs can come off. And uh, as we're stabilizing at uh, 12,000, the other thing to do is get the fuel tanks changed into aux. So we'll start pulling from the rear tanks. And I'm going to do that over here on the other side as well, right aux. All right. Successful test, successful first time test of the actual correctly modeled fuel system. Of course, now we're way up over 12,000 again. Add five degrees to the old published course for the mo for, uh, for modern course due to the magnetic variation change. Yep, yeah, we discussed that, uh, I think, prior to you popping in. So, yeah, we did take a note of that. Now I'm just trying to get the plane leveled at 12,000. We'll let autopilot take it from there as far as the altitude control. I think for heading, I'm going to spin this around to 1.5 and let him keep one, a 1.50 one for us. Yeah, there's no automated means of tracking these beams. You've got to do this all through heading hold tonight. So let's get that 100 feet back. We'll get autopilot engaged and we'll do another check of where we are with the, uh, the beep beep. So, autopilot, if I can find the click spot, come on, come on. Autopilot, level, and heading mode, there we go, okay. All right, so we can uh, let auto focus on the flying, and uh, we'll focus on the navigating. He'll, auto will aviate, and we will navigate. And 23, we'll reduce the cruise power now, 23, and... Again, not quite getting 34 because of the altitude, but 23 and 34 is the usual cruise setting that I use. But uh, 34 is uh, is a pipe dream at 12,000 feet, so we'll just get what we get. Oh, and uh, I don't think I ever put the... Yeah, I should have gone into auto lean there. A checklist item that we've got to add now that we've got an actual uh, realistically modeled auto, auto mix system. Nice. All right, let's do uh, let's do a beep beep test here. I gotta remember to mute the mic when I do this. Yeah, we're well onto the uh, well onto the uh, November side. No, that was that was November. I thought uh, Bob. I, I thought that the the opening long pulse was the stronger one there. Yep. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> I'm the newbie at this, but that sounded definitely to me like the opening strong pulse. Let's listen to it one more time. Did you guys hear that high beeping? That was, I'll show you in just a minute. Okay, I've, I've completely confused myself as to whether Mike's muted or not muted or whatever, so, so if that wasn't clear, then uh, I apologize. But we are somewhere in the vicinity of the Carlin fan marker. You heard that high-pitched beep, beep, beep. Three long signals. That's where we were. So we're somewhere around here. And uh, again, we're trying to refine this track. I've, I've, I went out, and I think I'm now on the north side, and I think I'm trying to come back to it. So we'll see how we go. But that high-pitched beep was the, our indication that we're at that what they call fan marker. So that's another cross-check of your position that you can make. Alright, let's do another check. Uh, 
I still think we're slightly on the end side, the November side. Opening pulse was just still a bit stronger, so I'm going to put in another 10 degrees of correction here. We're also getting to the point, if we're at Carlin, we're also getting to the point where we should start to maybe check on Battle Mountain and see if we are in range of that yet. So let's dial that in on the second radio, 281, which I think I had. No? Nothing on you yet? Okay, fine. Okay, so that, that pulsing, da, 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 it's very, very close now. We're pretty close to on, uh, on the beam there. They were not as, they were, they were close to being the same intensity I felt. Maybe slightly on the uh, November side still, but, uh, but much closer. So now, here's where I don't, didn't quite catch which way we got to add the five or, or subtract the five. We're, we're zero, five, zero. The uh, outbound's a 230. I think we're adding 5, right, Bob? 235 is our... 235 is our desired course. Of course, we got to add in wind correction. I have no idea what winds aloft are doing. So, we'll just, we'll just go to 240. I'll turn the audio on, number 2. It's the yellow bar on the left of the HUD. You will hear uh, Battle Mountain. Ah, okay. That's that's what it was. Okay, that sounds to me like we're pretty close to on course. I don't hear a lot of variation in the intensity. That's almost a solid tone there. I mean, you could hear the pulse just enough to know that it's pulsing, but it was very close to the same intensity. So far, so good. Then I think we're, I think we're not doing too bad. Now you'll notice if you've got really good pitch, you'll notice that the, the frequency coming in on the second radio, the green radio, was slightly higher in pitch than the first radio. I think Bob said he put that in, in intentionally just so you could hear the difference between the, the radios coming in through one and versus two. That it's not quite a realistic thing. They were actually the same. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Bob, a thousand kilohertz tone um, coming through both, but you've artificially inflated the ones coming in on number two just for troubleshooting purposes, if I understand correctly. Two, three, four to track that course. Okay, very good. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm two, four, zero now. The other thing, though, is, is, uh, is I don't know what the winds aloft are doing, um, so we're going to kind of just use the sound to guide us and, and we'll correct as we need to. But I'm going to do, I'm going to mute the mic again and we'll, I'll show you the difference between the, uh, the slight, slightly elevated pitch of the second radio. Again, if you, if you, if guys, if guys are the musicians, uh, you'll be able to tell this maybe, possibly. The, the second one is slightly sharp, if you will. So Bob says, actually, the real rangers had a bit of difference also to help distinguish between stations on dual radios. Interesting. Okay, there you go. There you go. Um, but you also heard uh, at the beginning, like I said, the test tone that it starts with. And it's, it's actually not a test tone. It's really just the identifier. So that's what you heard when we first turned on Battle Mountain is the, uh, is the identifier tones. Turn them on at the same time, you'll hear a beat note. Yeah, the wavering, uh, the wavering uh, sensation when two pitches are slightly off from each other. We'll hear that. It's 
it's like listening to a middle school band, isn't it? <laughs> we don't learn intonation until high school. <laughs> Bob, I don't need you to shut up at all, man. I appreciate you being here. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. And uh, I appreciate the guidance. You know, I, I kind of fumbled through most of this on my own when I did a little test flight. I got about this far. Um, I wasn't quite clear on how to tell on this, um, this first chart which side was which, but I did it by trial and error. As I, as I got farther from the beam, one tone got dominant and one tone faded away, so I was like, oh, I guess I'm going the wrong way, and I circled back and it worked out that way. Uh, but knowing from the sound which side I'm on is even easier. Now, and I'll, I'll t tell you guys, like Bob was saying, that, oh, what did I do? Oh, well that's my stream. <laughs> the beeping confused me. <laughs> so that was my alert because uh, Brian Remap is with us, or Brain Remap. I'm sorry, Brian Brain. <laughs> thank you for hitting the follow button, but also thank you for confusing the hell out of me as I heard this crazy beeping sound that was not related to any of the radios. Uh, I guess I've just got beeping online. Ski Jeffrey says, uh, I always said the guy that made the word cacophony was listening to an elementary school band at the time. Yeah, uh, having been there and done that uh, both personally and with my children. Uh, Jeffrey, I know what you mean. Um, so we've gotten you know, Bob's very helpful tip that the solid line is the end side and the faded line is the alpha side. That is wonderful news. However, on these other charts, so we're going to join, it's going to say down here, joins 304. So we're on Crater Lake 304, and we're coming in from the right here. Um, yeah, toward Lovelock. Now see, this version of the chart is much more explicit, and I like it. Because, God, you can't mess that up. Right? Uh, I apologize for the... Never mind. <laughs> Children, cover your eyes. Um... But, uh, but yeah, those charts are uh, much more distinct, distinguishable about which side you're supposed to be on, if you can remember which one is which as far as the Morse code goes. Probably not a bad idea. Oh, Dakota Dreaming. Yes, uh, Bob, I, I downloaded... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Whoops. I downloaded all of them, man. I don't know how many of them are going to be useful. But I got all of them. <laughs> all right. Is that a lake or when is that a town? Uh, I can't remember now. I don't think I did the Ortho 4 XP scenery up through here. So this is all, I guess, X plane default scenery. Dang, if I thought of that, I would have, that would have been a good thing to do. Oh well. For next time. David 40W is here. Yeah, we're doing some special navigation tonight, David. We're navigating by by, by beeps. We're, we're beeping navigating. All right, where are we? We are trying to come into... Let's see, should we go back to this one here? So let's see where we are. The other thing that you'll notice, guys, is as we get further away from the... Um, Elko, and closer to the Battle Mountain, you'll hear that the relative volume of the, these is getting uh, different as well. Let's let's see how we are in relation of one versus the other. It works so well, it's a wonder anyone invented VOR. Well, I do love me some VOR navigation, um, but uh, but this is pretty this is pretty cool. I mean, when I saw this posted in that thread with the uh, the Arrowworks C47, I was like. Dang, I gotta give that a try. Somebody else on stream also mentioned it to me. So I got a little egging on from somebody. I don't remember who it was. They said, hey, Rob, you know, give this a try. But, uh, but yeah, man, it's been pretty nifty. We'll see how it goes. Huh? We'll see if we can get all the way down to Reno. All right, let's, uh, let's listen to the relative volume of these two stations. Okay, that seems pretty on course. I didn't, I didn't hear any variation, but it's awful, awfully quiet. Let's try the Battle Mountain one now. Yep, 
Yeah, I'd say we're, we're tracking those pretty well, both of them. But the Battle Mountain one is definitely getting louder, and the Elko is definitely getting softer. So we know that we're, we're making progress in the correct direction. Of course, you guys are seeing that progress bar up top, too. I don't see that on my sim screen. That's something that's added uh, afterwards, so you guys see that, and I do not. But you guys have additional confirmation whether I am or am not tracking in the correct direction. Jeffrey says, I wonder how many potential pilots failed their medical due to tone deafness. Yeah, well, I don't think hearing that subtle pitch variation is, is explicitly necessary for this exercise, but the ability to kind of tell which side is pulsing louder, that, that when that rhythm goes, you got to be able to tell which one is it. Is it the da 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 or is it da 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 I know I sound like a crazy person when I say it, but it, it really is like how you did It's like you had to kind of feel the rhythm of it. It's a very musical way to navigate. <laughs> exactly, says Bob. You totally have that. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and I am... Uh, I am Bob, an amateur musician as well, so I kind of do get down the whole rhythmic vibe with it as well. <laughs> it's really a nifty add-on. You've done a wonderful job with it, man. Thank you, and I'm using the stream chat rather than Discord because I think other people will be able to see it, and then if you remember it, yeah, no, that's fine, and either way works for me. Um, the streams, so that the, the Discord audio does come through the stream as well, so either way works, and I do upload all of my streams to YouTube afterwards, so anyone who wants to refer back and see how, this, how it's done as a demo flight can always uh, link to the YouTube video once, uh, once that export's done. So, yeah, but either way, the, the, the stream chat, Oh, that's totally cool. I had no idea that the Discord audio went into... That's awesome. Yep, yeah, you, sh you sh uh, Either way, you should... Uh, it will be part of the permanent record. So, be careful what you say. Just take a kind of spin through the telephone here, make sure there's nothing, uh, nothing pressing going on. Real work's been kind of monopolizing my time this week so far, but so far so good. So magnetic says we're two four zero exactly. DG's off by a degree or so. Sperry's off by uh, a degree or so in the other direction. Funny how that works. And uh, I guess I gotta get used to the idea that I need to check on my fuel. <laughs> the, f the fuel system, see how's the right aux doing, left aux doing. Yeah, we still got about 80 gallons in each, so we're good. Kind of cool that the uh, AeroWorks team finally has that realistic fuel working. All right, I think it's time for another uh, another beam check. Let me mute the mic again. Pretty close, but it's also getting very, very hard to hear. It's mu it must be well in the distance behind us at this point. Let's see how Battle Mountain's doing. Well, you can hear we're definitely on the alpha side, and we need to get that corrected. So which way does that mean we need to go? So that means 
as we are heading toward Battle Mountain that we're on the, again, the solid line, this is the November side, this is the Alpha side, so we need to correct to the right. Let's do that. I'm going to put in a pretty aggressive correction, about 60 degree correction. So we'll, we'll, we'll spot check that a few times and see how that correction does us. And then again, the course is, the marked course is 229. So again, according to Bob, it's about a 234. But again, I haven't checked winds aloft, so we would have to uh, just take with a grain of salt. We were going to, you know, go about a 234, 235, and then, you know, we may need to adjust for wind drift as well. So let's check that beeping again, see how we are. Yeah, I still feel like that alpha is much more dominant, so we're going to keep that right-hand correction in for a little bit. Eventually, you get a feel for how much to correct versus the distance, just like VOR. Right, obviously, because the closer in you are, the more a course correction uh, changes the angle at which you're approaching the station. If you're further away, big correction could still mean a small angle difference. The other thing is, like, I'm not completely sure. I mean, it's not it's it's not out of the question that we're actually on the other side of Battle Mountain that I'm correcting the wrong way. So let's check it again. See if we're getting better or worse. Still on the alpha side, but I think it's getting better. We're gonna, I'm gonna add a little bit more even into the correction, and we'll just make sure. Well, we're passing over some airport down there, or is that an airport? Is that an airport? A bunch of parallel grass strips. No, I guess it's a farm of some sort. Beep check. Yeah, I think that's much closer. So I think we corrected in the, the uh, appropriate direction. Let's get back on to a, about a 235 then. We'll say maybe a 240 just in case we're getting blown southbound. Close enough for government work for right now. Let's go ahead and get our next chart up as well. Again, this says joins 304, so I've got the Crater Lake 304 open as well. And I think, so this is coming out of Battle Mountain. And the next station down the line is Lovelock. LOL, I love that. <laughs> this whole thing is an LOL. 209 is the frequency, so we'll since we got Battle Mountain tuned on NAV, or yeah, ADF-2, we'll go ahead and get 209 tuned on ADF-1. Oh, now we got static now because we get tuned into nothing. Two. Two, oh, oops. Oh, that is really, really faint. Really, really faint, but we're definitely on the November side of that. We're too far north for that beam. All right, let's get let's check the uh, the one we're flying. Uh, 
Uh, we're definitely on the alpha side of that, so we're if we're if we're past it, we're too far north. Let's correct left and see what happens. Just pass and wait, says Bob, okay? All right, let's listen to it. So what's happening is we're passing so close over it that the 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 uh, at the November side is completely faded away. Well, there it is. Was that that may have been it? The the what 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 they call the cone of silence as we pass right over the station. Both of them fade out completely. That's what it sounds like right as you pass over the, the, just like in a VOR, when you pass over a VOR, the bearing changes rapidly. So the, the tones, the, the, the shape of the tones changes rapidly as you pass right over it or near it. Well, given that, we've definitely passed it, and if we are on which side, we're hearing that it's that secondary pulse, it's the alpha side, so now we know we've got to correct to the left. This is, uh, a little further down the line, but let's say Battle Mountain is here, where these two cross. So we're past Battle Mountain, but we're still on the alpha side. So that means we're here, we're going to correct to the left. And of course that's another stream alert, what just happened there. Probably not a good idea for my stream alert to be a bunch of beeping sounds tonight, huh? Captain Hall is with us, Captain Hall, thank you so much for the follow, appreciate you stopping in. We're doing some really old school navigation, we usually just do VORs, NDBs, that kind of thing. We're taking it back a couple dec decades even from that with, uh, with Bob Denny's low frequency four course radio range plug-in for X-Plane 11 in the AeroWorks DC3, the freshly updated AeroWorks DC3. So uh, we're having a lot of fun with some new add-ons tonight. Yeah, we're still hearing that second pulse stronger. So we've still got a correct left here. And then probably, yeah, so Captain Hall, thanks for stopping in. Dakota Dreaming is actually the author of that plug-in. So he's checking out the stream tonight, and he's helping me out as I kind of muddle my way through it. Uh, apparently, according to him, I'm not doing too bad. We're, we're now going to check to see how we're doing with, we're floating around, and we can actually see visually. I mean, it's kind of obvious. We're in the vicinity of this dry bed, lake bed here. We can, we can see it. If I can get this crap out of the way. Uh, we passed it. We could see it. It was there. Is it over there? Ah, there it is. So and I need to adjust that viewpoint up a little bit. There we go. Let me resave it. But the, the arrow works update messed up on my views. So, but anyway, so there we are. We're somewhere in that vicinity. 
Um, but we're definitely on the alpha side of the Battle Mountain, because that secondary pulse is stronger. Now let's see where we are with Lovelock. If that's true, we're going to be on the November side with that first pulse being stronger as we track down into Lovelock. So let's, let's just test that theory. I feel like that is very, very slightly stronger on the first pulse, which means we're very, very slightly on the uh, November side. And again, for those of you joining late, the way these old radio ranges work, they broadcast an N on one channel, they broadcast an F alpha on the other channel. If you're perfectly on that beam, you hear them mix completely together and you get a completely solid line. If you're hearing this side louder, the da, do da, da, then you're on the end side, which would be either here or here. If you're hearing the, uh, the opposite of that, the accents on the off beats, if you're a musician, then you're on the uh, alpha side. Now, having said all that, I completely forgot what my theory was. Syncopation and radio form. Yeah. One kilohertz tone, syncopated. Yeah, Captain Hall, man. We're blending uh, musicianship and airmanship tonight, and I am, uh, I am a pretend airman and a pretend musician both, so it works out well for me. All right, again, let's let's figure out where we were. Like I said, I think I was comp slightly north of course on both of these, which should mean alpha side on the one behind us. I think that's now slightly November side. It's real close though. But now let's see if we're slightly alpha side on the one in front of us, which is Lovelock. Which one is that? I don't know, I feel like we're pretty pretty well on course for that one. So let's go ahead and fly that course. 228, and of course the magnetic variation now adds 5 to that, so 233, three, 233. Puts us right there. Probably not a bad idea to spin through the, uh, once the direction settles out. We'll check our wet compass against our gyros again. Uh, Bob, you were talking about the gyros uh, drift earlier. These are two separate um, gyroscopic instruments and they tend to process at different rates. Um, this is the, of course, the, navig the primary navigation gyro and then this is the autopilot gyro. Uh, the bottom half of that actually. The top half is the target heading. Um, they are two gy separate gyros so they process at different rates. However, I don't think the AeroWorks uh, is consistent about which one it uses for autopilot use. I think that's one of the things that uh, they're probably fixing in the coming updates is that it was, it was kind of referencing itself off the wrong one. So, But we'll just do the normal prudent thing, which is to make sure they're all in sync. What's that reading about a 232 up there? 232 there. 232 there. Okay, good. they're good. Good deal. All right, and we'll cycle through engine gauges. Temps and pressure is all still looking pretty... Ooh, do I not... Okay, they're spiking way out of control. But uh, I think that must be just a... I'm going to chalk that up to just an error in the modeling. Yeah, you should be able to fly with them closed. We got, the, we got it in auto lean but I don't think that's quite working the way it should. Should be able to fly, at cruise you're supposed to be able to fly with them closed in auto lean. But uh, it's okay. 
we'll we'll just report that to the, the developer. That the, the auto mix system is a work in progress. Yeah, I've I found the same, and so I've I've kind of uh, taken a bit of a grain of salt with the previous version. I would just fly with the mix rich all the way. So I also don't think that there are any consequences modeled for hot engines. So I'm not I'm not going to worry too much about it. Uh, but anyway, so right and left aux still have uh, about 70 gallons each, so we're good there. All right, let's do a... Uh, that always happens before you fall out of the skies, says Ski Jeffrey. Yeah, the autopilot on the older one drove off of the directional gyro and not the Sperry. Don't know... Uh, don't know whether that's still the case, but uh, I just I just resync all three of them every now and then when I remember at least. All right, let's do another check of our position. We're going to uh, I think Love Luck I have on one here. We are very, very slightly on the alpha side of that, and I think that we're still coming into it. Now I'm trying to move the map over here, and like I said, it's a very, very large, dense PDF, so as I move these sliders, it's kind of taking a long time to, to move them. So yeah, if we're slightly on the alpha side, that means we need to correct to the right. Dakota says, in the old days, that was the that was Humboldt after the river, hence the HD identifier. Which one are we talking about? After, okay, Humboldt Lake there, yeah. The, oh, the uh, kind of the bullhorn-shaped one. See it here. Oh well. Anyway, back to the uh, back to the beep beep navigation. <laughs> so where are we in relation to? So that might be Green Lake there. So that means we're still just prior to Lovelock. Lovelock would be on the southern southwestern tip of Green Lake. But let's test the theory at least. And it looks like we might need to steer a little bit left if we need to aim for that southern, southwestern tip of the lake. But let's run the beep beeps and see if it tells us the same. Slightly on the alpha side, the, the second pulse was slightly stronger, so I think we need to correct actually a little bit to the right. That's what that tells me. It 
doesn't quite line up with what I'm seeing, but let's just test the theory. Al South MIA is here. Hey, how are you, Al? Good to see you. We're doing uh, we're doing some beep beep navigation as I've been calling it all night, stupidly, because I'm an idiot like that. But we're navigating by the old four course radio range. This is the plug-in that we've got uh, going, and uh, our friend Bob is with us tonight, Mr. Dakota Dreaming. So he's watching us muddle our way through his uh, masterpiece of an add-on here, <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, so we've we've got the beeping going on. The, the intensity of the first versus the second part of the beep tells us whether we're right or left, of course. We're locked into the only of the four courses that the radios were set up with. Of course, it's like I said, it's not north, south, east, west necessarily. They rotate them to create airways of whatever direction they want to create. But you're limited to these four courses separated by 90 degrees. If you're right on the beam, the, uh, the alpha and the November blend into a perfect solid tone. If you're on one side or the other, you're here one more so than the other, and you know which way to correct based on that. Let's uh, let's get a position off of uh, Love Luck on 209. And i got to keep muting the mic when I do that. I'm still hearing ever so slight intensity on the second part of that. Do, da, do, da. Very, I, I've exaggerated that there. But uh, that is the alpha side. So it's still telling me, if I'm hearing it correctly, still telling me that I need to correct to the right to get back on course. So let's do that. So I feel like I'm coming toward this lake at maybe a different angle. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm pointed to the bottom of the lake, but I'm coming into it at a, from further south than I should be. That's probably what's going on here. Just adding in just another 10 degrees. Again, visually, I feel like I should be pointed towards the south end of that dry lake bed. But again, I think I'm just not coming into it from the angle that I should be. Let's go ahead and tune the next one down the line if I haven't already. What did I say that one was? Oh, I don't know if I did. Because the next one... Yeah, way down here. Next one is actually going to be on the next chart down. Okay, now i got to figure out where. <laughs> Okay, so there's Love Lock there. So we're actually fully, after we pass over Love Lock, we're fully onto this chart. So we'll go ahead and close up the previous one. Onto the Mount Whitney chart. We'll go toward Humboldt Lake. Past Carson Sink. And then we'll start pipping, picking up Reno on 254. So we got 209 on this one. Yep. Stop. Stop. What did I say, 254? Oh, there's static. Oh, there's mostly static. You can almost hear it a little tiny bit, but mostly static. We're too too far away to receive that one. So let's shut that off. All right, one more check. Now we're coming into it from a better angle. Now I think if we turn towards the bottom of that lake bed, we're, we're going to be tracing that beam all the way down. Now that's cheating, though. But by cross-referencing with the visual, that's cheating. But I'm a, I'm a cheater. It's all right. Then normally it's the other way around. Normally when I'm flying VFR, I cheat by leaning on my radio navigation. So now I'm flying radio navigation, but I'm cheating by looking at visual references. <laughs> my, how the tables have turned. Uh, the one checklist item that I have not quite gotten to yet is that one. Stream is not sponsored by Red Bull, guys, but it damn well should be, as often as I mention it. 
One of these days they'll send me a check. I know they will. I promote your product to dozens of people at a time, guys. Come on. Compensate me accordingly. <laughs> Alright, again, uh, I forget which is which. I think this is... Did I tune it on this one? I, and, and I'm fumbling around, guys, because I've got to keep muting the mic every time. So if I don't mute my mic when I start these beeping, you're hearing, you'll hear it through the stream, and then you'll hear it through the mic, which, which, which makes it harder for you guys to hear. Still sounds fine to me, but it makes it harder for you guys to hear the, the rhythmic intensity variation. So here we go again. All right, we're very, very, very close to it. Uh, I'm going to steer a little bit left just visually to get to the bottom of that lake, but we're going to hear the cone of silence as we pass right over it. We know we're close because we've, we've got that visual reference that says it's right there at the bottom of the lake, but we're going to work. We know we're close. We can, we can also tell we're close because it's very, very loud. Um, but as we pass right over it, you'll hear that it'll go silent. If we miss it slightly, which we're apt to, same with the VOR, you never quite get right over top of it. But as you miss it slightly, you'll hear either just the alpha or just the November, depending on which side we pass it over. And then if we get it close enough, you'll hear both of them go silent for a moment. So let's see how that goes. With the mic off, yes. Yeah, Bob, I got a, <laughs> I got a gamma on for a certain extent. That's just kind of my MO here. But here we go. Is that the most exciting beeping you've ever heard in your life, guys? Almost there. Almost there. Stay on target. There we go. Yeah, we nailed it. Flew right over top of it. The A and the N both went silent pretty much at the same time. It's a pretty, pretty accurate uh, hit of that's that uh, that's the dead center target there. We'll see him come back in now on the other side.
Yeah, you hear them both come back in pretty solid now. And the intensity is very, very close to both. I, I feel like we're pretty well on that beam. Let's see how we're doing on the next station down the line here. Very, very faint. Very, very faint, but very, uh, very, uh, very far away. But uh, still, kind of get the sense that it was fairly matched in intensity, so we're we're we're, we're close to it. You see, these paths line up pretty well. So if you're tracing one out accurately, you're you're almost almost guaranteed to to trace the other one out. And again, we can kind of kind of cheat and see, you know, that we're between Carson Sink on this side and the uh, bullhorn shaped one on the other side. We're kind of shooting right down that valley in between, so visually it lines up with what we're doing. Looks like we're drifting slightly, ever so slightly to the right. But before I correct, I want to check the uh, check the audio and see if that is indeed the case, right? Again, I'm trying to navigate through the radio navigation, not through the visual landmarks. If my theory is correct, if we are indeed drifting a little bit farther to the right, then the second part of that alpha should become slightly dominant. Again, those who are joining late, And that's really horribly sc scrawled with my little drawing tool. But it's a long and a short for the November. It's a short and a long for the Alpha. If, they, if you're right on the beam, they'll blend perfectly. If you're on one side or the other side, you hear one or the other become dominant. So as we drift, what I feel is visually drifting to the right, we should feel this Alpha become a little bit more dominant. So we should hear a syncopated rhythm. Do, da, do, da, do, da, do, da. Guys are probably getting sick of me doing that, but let's see. Well, for the moment, I feel like that's pretty well, uh, Pretty well matched in intensity, so we'll see. I mean, I think that I'm drifting slightly to the right, but it's also possible that I'm pointed slightly to the right and being blown onto the course. So we might just have a little bit of a wind correction that's keeping us tracking down the center of that beam. Um, but again, before I oh you so Bob felt he, that he felt a little bit more of an alpha pulse there. I thought it was pretty close. I'm going to well, let's listen again. Yeah, all right, I'll buy that ever so slight alpha side. Just to, uh, for those who join late, I'm going to go ahead, I know you're going to hate this, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and go radical alpha just so people can get a sense of what we're talking about if they join late. So we'll fly up north and we'll, we'll see or, hear that syncopated rhythm just get worse and worse, or more, more and more, I would say worse, but it'll be more and more prevalent. Do da do da do da do da. The accents on the uh, accents on the off beats for all you musicians on the channel. So we'll hear it. Uh, we'll hear it get uh, worse and worse as we fly more and more north. Of course, the other thing we need to do, actually, <laughs> kind of need to see if we're into Oakland's airspace yet. Oh, Oakland hopped offline, so don't need to worry about it. This is one night that I'm like, I, I mean, normally I love interacting with air traffic control, but this is one night where it kind of made sense not to have air traffic control just because we're doing something a little goofy and different. <laughs> you 
yeah, uh, D Dakota Dreaming. So yeah, I, I know it was. Uh, I was pretty close to that beam. It was ever so slight that uh, that variation, but I just wanted those who joined the stream late to hear uh, what it sounds like when you're off course. And, you, and again, on the alpha side, November side, you'll hear the opposite. You hear da do da do da do da do. But on this state, in case it's going to be the exact opposite, you hear the off beats will be accented. Let's listen to that. Yeah, you could even hear it as the as we first tuned it. You could even hear it that the the second identifier, the second station identification was louder than the first. So again, that tells you that that second part of the message is the alpha. All right. So now let's wiggle it back down to where we were, which means a complete 180 here. <laughs> So I plan for I think 201.8 miles. I think we'll be because of our zigzagging around to, to demonstrate this stuff. I think we're probably going to end up a little late into Reno and probably a little bit short on fuel. We'll take we'll uh, take note of that as we get down. We always check our ETA and uh, remaining fuel against my spreadsheet calculations. I don't use SimBrief or anything like that. I do my own fuel and and uh, time estimates uh, via a spreadsheet. If you ever wanted to check out how I make those numbers work, you can. Go over to the Slant Alpha Adventures YouTube page. Links on the lower left-hand side of the screen, and there's a tutorials playlist that's got uh, some stuff about talking to air traffic control. It's got some stuff about creating and uh, uh, VFR and IFR routes, and it also has a tutorial on how I put up to put together that spreadsheet to come up with my flight time and fuel estimates. And you'll see from my streams that normally, if they're off, there's a reason they're off. If everything goes according to plan, they tend to be pretty good. So in some aircraft, I've got it dialed in better than others. And again, sometimes if I'm at a different altitude than I usually fly at or uh, have a lot of holds or, or other deviations, obviously we burn more fuel that way. But those estimates tend to be pretty reliable. All right, let's do another check of the beam. And once we get back on it, we'll, head, uh, we'll get back on our course. Still slightly emphasized on the second half of those beats. So we're still on the alpha side, still on the north side of that beam. But we know as we get close to that Carson Sink land feature, we know that we're going to be coming up on that beam. Let's check it again. Still slightly on the alpha side, from what I can tell. Those were pretty evenly matched, those two IDs. Okay, I think we're we're on it now. So we got outbound is uh, 228, so 234 with the updated magnetic variation. Yeah, those turns are almost perfectly evenly matched in uh, in intensity now. If anything, we're slightly on the November side now. That first pulse seems like it's just a hair louder. Yeah, 
yeah, we're, we're dialed right into uh, into it right now, I think. Oh, it's very, very close now. Very, very close. Alright, shut that off for just a bit. Actually, let's uh, take a peek. See if see if we're any closer to Reno now. To 5-4. It's so faint because I can barely make it out. And of course, this chart bears that out. I mean, we're, we can see that we're kind of on the southwest side of Carson Sink here. We can kind of see that we should be, should be more or less losing the end of Love Lock. And we're outside of the beam down toward Reno. So we're, we're kind of, we're more or less right here, I would say. But that love lock beam should be getting quieter, the Reno beam should be getting louder, and I'll tell you what guys, yeah, I think it's time to start our briefing for our arrival. Wouldn't you say? Let's do one more burn through the uh, engine gauges. Now we know that the temps are going to be out of control because the the uh, auto mix isn't quite f completely functional. We do need to look at the uh, aux tanks. Don't really need to worry too much until they get down to about 25. We got about 60, 58 gallons in each, so we're okay. Mains still have plenty. Right main has a little less because we were sitting on the ground running it while we were yapping away. But we can actually fix that. We can let's let's uh, let's burn a little bit from the left main, guys. What do you say? Just balance the load a little bit. Let that sit like that for just a minute. Now you need to do it again during a thunderstorm. Nah, no thank you. I'm going to have enough time. This, all right, here's here's the deal. Uh, Mount Whitney, whoops. All right, we're in nice visual condition, so we could just do a visual approach to Reno. But we want to try maybe to do this range approach. I don't know that I'm going to be able to pull it off. We'll try. If I can find it. Which one of these is it? Uh, Reno, oh, Reno 59. Uh, nope, that's an on-route chart. Is it Reno Tango 2? Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I remember which one it is. I don't remember which one it is. It's the one in all caps. It's the one in all caps. Okay, yeah, I'll show you this. Close the, uh, X-Plane page. So... Let's do this. We got there's our en route, there's our approach, and there's our airport diagram. So we want to approach it. All right, it's minimum safe altitude, 25 miles is 12,000. That's where we're at. Reno range is on 254. We know that because we've got it tuned. I think 254. Yep. We're gonna be coming in on the 050 as we pass over the cone. When we hear that silence. We're going to turn outbound to a 343 and start descending to 6600. And then, as we get established inbound on a 343, I'm sorry, yeah, outbound on a 343, as we get established, um, as we get established inbound on a 163, we can descend to 5900. And then, hopefully, we will see the airport from there. Minimums. It's a left turn to 7100 if we go missed. Uh, minimums for circling approach is 5,400 feet. Yeah, we will give this a try. I don't know how well this is going to go. This, this I did not practice. The 
beam navigation I did practice. The uh, the range approach I did not. Alright, let's before we get too far into that, oh let's let's also do this. I know we're kind of drifting off aimlessly into the sunset. I'll I'll reassess my position from a navigation standpoint in a moment, but I do want to jump back over to here. Yeah, so Oakland's gone, so it's just us, nobody but us chickens. Mitar uh, K R N O. Variable at three, okay, that makes it easy. We'll just we'll just land on the southbound runways. 3020 was exactly what we have it set to already, so that's not a problem. Yeah, so so fortunately the winds are cooperative. We'll just land on the southbound runways. We don't have to do any goofy circling. Um, so once we get uh, once we establish on that inbound course, we should be lined up for the uh, one sixes here. Um, where are we parking? I would say let's land on the left side. Looks like general aviation stuff is over here on the east side of the field. So we'll land on 16 left and uh, hopefully not have to go that far down. We'll hopefully turn off before the crossing runway. We might even make, well, if we make Juliet, we'll turn right on Charlie. If we go longer, we'll turn left on Charlie and we'll aim to park here. We'll kind of aim for the uh, ramp underneath the tower. That'll be our parking location. So left hand turn off if we land, climbing, what was it, right turn? Climbing, nope, it's left either way. So climbing left turn to 7100 or uh, left hand turn off if we uh, if we make it down. All right, anything else I'm missing on the briefing? Frequency course, minimums, winds and crosswinds. Uh, what was the forecast ceiling? I think pretty much no cloud cover. Uh, 10 statute miles, few at 25,000. So no cloud cover that we have to worry about. Talked about the missed approach and turn off. Okay, so we're, we're fully briefed on that approach. We'll see how we go. All right, now let's... Uh, Lots of time in the holding pattern, says Dakota. Nah, not the way we descend, man. <laughs> yeah, it might be a couple turns. It's all right. Um, let's get back onto that unroute chart. And again, we're coming inbound to the 254. Let's see uh, where we are. If we are north, of course, it will, it will sound November. If we're south, of course, it will sound Alpha. Let's check it out. Let's mute the mic so you guys can hear it unencumbered. That is so faint, so faint, but I think it's fairly even. And again, I think visually, is that Lake Tahoe? Actually. And we're not far from the airport, honestly. But I think that might be Lake Tahoe. Oh, Pyramid Lake, gotcha. Oh, Tahoe's further down to the left, south south and west of the airport, okay. Yep, so who said pyramid? Yeah. Yep, so it looks like Reno is halfway between pyramid and Tahoe. Tahoe will be further down to the left, but it does look to me like we're definitely coming into getting close here. So how much time in the holding pattern now that you say it? So if we cross it at 12,000, and then we're descending to 66, so we're going to lose 5,400 feet there. So if we're 1,800 feet a minute, that's three minutes. That's not bad. 1,800 is pretty, pretty aggressive descent in this bird, though. But even if we're half of that, 900, that's uh, six minutes. So that's not too bad. If you do this approach, you'll need to keep the audio on through the entire approach. It's a fine art. 
I will try. I will do my best on that. Um, I'm going to try and narrate what I'm doing, though, so it might muddle the uh, sound, though. But uh, we'll do our best. 1800 in the DC-3 would require gear down. Yeah, 1800 is a, is a pretty aggressive, pretty aggressive. But even if we if we even if we do it, yeah, 9,000, 10, you know, 9,000, 9, 9, 9,000, 900 to 1. 1,000. That's uh, five to six minutes in the pattern. That's not too bad. All right, let's see how we are coming into Reno. I'll mute the mic. That sounds ever so slightly November to me. It sounds like da do da do da do da do. So the first pulse is the loudest. That's the November side. So that means if I get this chart back in front of me, as we come in, that means we're too far north. We got to correct a little to the left. So we'll throw in not too much. We'll throw in. Uh, well, let's first of all, before we make any corrections, let's go ahead and resync here. What's that? A two. 4 2. 2 4, that's drifted up a couple. Yeah, so now the autopilot's gonna correct headings, which it should it should be working off of this gyro. So we'll let it settle in. Now it's about a 2 4 3. That's one too high. We'll let it settle in again. Looks like a two, four, four to five. Okay, that's that's now looking good. How's this one looking? Knock that one up to the there we go. Alright, and now we said we were slightly on the November side coming into Reno. That means we need to correct left. So we'll put in uh, 10, 15 degrees left. He says, listen for Wadsworth. <coughs> There's a Wadsworth fan marker here as we pass over it. That will be a very high-pitched single long tone as we cross right over that point there. Still slightly on the November side, I think. So I'm going to put another 10 degrees left here.
I think we're <coughs> I think we're very close to on beam, but we want to see if we can hear that fan marker. Uh, by the same token, though, I think ahead is Tahoe now. So we've got to be we've got to be right on top of this airport. I am just about to pass over the fan marker. It's getting so quiet, and I think it's because we're pretty much passing over it, but I'm sure not seeing the airport yet. No, I can hear the fan marker, though. You guys hear that? That single high? Sounds like a truck backing up. Okay, so that's the fan marker. Really need to start down, says, uh, says Dakota. All right, let's start our descent then. <coughs> Go through our descent checklist. <coughs> Pardon me, guys. I gotta grab a uh, try, grab a drink here. back to the right just a little bit just because I know that's supposed to be a 228 and again we don't know what the wind correction is so we're kind of winging it from that standpoint all right let's uh, get to the descent checklist get back to the mains on the fuel tanks oh I've ran on that left main way too long completely forgot I was doing that let's go over to the right and see if we need to readjust our balancing plan here yeah, we do. All right, well, the auxes are fine. We're going to run both on the right main for a little bit, but we've got to remember to fix that. All right, so we're rebalancing. We've got to put a little note on my finger to remember that. Seatbelt signs can come on. We'll uh, reduce to... Uh, Reduce manifold pressure and then we'll reduce RPMs, 20 and 20. We'll start our descent. Rio traffic, Douglas number 341 <coughs> Alpha is approximately 15 miles to the east. Descending through 10,000, we'll be entering a left base for runway 16 left, full stop, Reno. All right, so Northwest Orient's found the airport. I think we're getting there.
still hear that fan marker going. <clears throat> Beam sounds pretty even to me, if ever so slightly alpha side. Yeah, we're alpha side for sure now. All right, so what's that mean? We need to correct to the need to correct to the right. Yeah, we're definitely alpha side now, so correcting to the right. Slight, but it's Ooh. was that our range? Yeah, we're ever so slightly off the side. I'm, I'm edging it to the right, but I think we, I, can, I can see the airport actually up ahead. <clears throat> Might be through that pedestal now. I would say that's our airport, guys. Yeah, I'm still correcting slightly right to get on the, off of the alpha side. Closer in, you've got to make a bigger correction to get a, a, an angle difference. Louder because it's very close. Black Fox is here. Hey, what's going on, Black Fox? We're doing some old school radio navigation. Older school than I usually do, even. Thank you for the well wishes, by the way. Okay, that's pretty even, I think. That sounds pretty even to me. I, you know, I, it might be I'm throwing you off because I'm turning the mic on and off. It sounds pretty even to me.
And now I can I can hear the ever so slight increase on the first part of that tone. I was also looking for Northwest Orient. He said he was turning final. Definitely on the November side now. Really just not seeing him at all. So, should be pretty close to on this beam. Remember, it's uh, 6,600 feet as we turn to the north after we pass it. It sounds so close to me. Reno traffic, that was for an office. Clear on runway 16 left, Reno. We need to level out. Yeah, it doesn't seem like the approach is working out too well, guys. I may have just missed the... Uh, Bob, is, Bob is suggesting that I miss the beam. We're going to go ahead and shut that off now. We'll, we'll finish it up visually. So, apologies if that part didn't work out. We'll fly this thing for real. Apologies that that part didn't work out. We'll try that again on another stream, guys. But we'll go ahead and uh, circle. You pass the station to the north, says Bob. Okay. Fair enough. We'll give that a shot again. But we will, uh, yeah, we got the field pretty much in sight. Back over our right shoulder, so we'll, we'll be okay. It's a runway 16, so uh, 070 will be a right base. Field elevation is 4,400 feet more or less, so we'll aim for 5,400 feet. So we need to do a few things here for the uh, approach. We need to go into auto rich fuel tanks into uh, mains, left main and I think right main is set, whoops, nope, right aux. <clears throat> Alright, let's reorient ourselves. 070 was the left base, or right base, yeah, right base. Cows can go into trail. Fuel pumps can go on. We're at 120 knots, we go flaps one. And we're passing our runway. Reno traffic, Douglas 5 and 4 Delta Victor's on about a 3 mile final runway 16 left, Reno. We'll gradually increase the props. Blow 100, we can go gear and flaps too. Let's get 
back on center line. We'll gradually increase the props. And we might, uh, might be in trouble with speed and altitude management here, guys. We'll do our best. Nose up, speed off, 90 knots, we can go flaps three. Eighty knots we'll go flaps four. Alright, we're okay. Aim for 70 knots on final. Flaps are set and check, gears green. And then attention's announced, runway appears clear. Props are forward. Landing rate predictions, guys, if you have them, if you will pop a number into the chat. Just a number, there's no bot command associated. Oh, we're at 60. No, okay, we need a get back up to about 70 knots. There's no bot command, but if you want to put a prediction in for the vertical rate of descent at the moment the wheels touch, you can go ahead and do that. Positive or negative numbers. Because they actually model the suspension on the gear now. Oh, really? Is it going to bounce like crazy, or is it going to be uh, better? should be better. It's much less bouncy. Alright, a little bit of a crosswind here. So let's get back on center line. There we go. There we go. Nicely done. <clears throat> Stow the flaps. Uh, crosswind's blowing me off the center line now as we uh, as we roll out. Let's see if we can keep keep it on somewhat. <laughs> All right. Rollout wasn't the best, but the uh, landing wasn't too bad. 99. I'm happy with that. And we made it off onto Charlie. I didn't see which one we turned off at. But it was before the crossing runway. I'm going to say Lima onto Charlie. Was it as far down as Lima, or did we make it off at uh, Juliet? Well, we said we were heading to the tower. Oh, heck, we'll go right. All right, Reno traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Venture, clear of 16 left on the Charlie, Reno. Oh, there, there's the control tower, so we'll go to the right. So we must have made it off at Juliet. Boy, guys, this is a very narrow taxiway. <laughs> All right, again, the rudder's just out of habit. It's really st steering my brakes at this point. This is a very narrow taxiway. All right, arrival checklist. Let's get on it. Flaps were stowed. Anti-collision lights off. Oh, we never got the no smoking sign on to let the cabin crew know that we were arriving. But that can now come back off. Landing lights off, taxi light on, pito heat off, and fuel pumps off. All right, now that we have that all taken care of, let's drive the airplane, shall we? Cow flaps can go uh, open also. There they are.
The wind must have changed because it was supposed to be variable at three, but it sure does feel like there's a heck of a crosswind coming from the right. We got the Furbafa follow. Thank you, Mr. Furbafa. Appreciate you being here. Hope that you'll check us out again. It's primarily a general aviation stream. We throw in the occasional bizjet flight, and uh, every now and then we we'll whip out an airliner on you just to keep things fresh. There's Northwest Terrain over there to our left. But normally it's all through radio navigation. Tonight we did it through really old school net radio navigation. Normally it's VOR tracking and uh, analog ILS uh, flying and NDB approaches occasionally, stuff like that, localizer back course, all kinds of fun radio stuff. Don't use an FMC most of the time, but again, we will occasionally bend the rules just so we can fly our Cessna Citation, our favorite little bizjet. And uh, every now and then we'll do an airliner flight too, just to shake things up. But tonight we had uh, the, the four course radio range navigation uh, plug in on the X Plane Org forum from uh, Bob Denny. Bob Denny was kind enough to stop in and give us some coaching as we did our first little test flight here. Worked out fairly well. Didn't quite get the range instrument approach. That one I'll have to probably give another shot at some point. But the radio navigation, the beam navigation was working out pretty well for us, I thought. We'll make the next left here. We'll taxi in behind our friend. squeeze over here to his left and get a nice shot with the tower in the background. How about that? Try not to wingtip strike him. Still, we'll stay behind him. <laughs> uh, that'll do, pig. That'll do. All right, there we are. Taxi light can come off now. And uh, I think we did everything else. The transponder can go back to 1200, and we'll shut it off. ahead and get the uh, mix into cutoff. Magnetos and generators can come off. I'll catch up with the chat in just a few minutes, guys. Uh, just bear with me. I hand fly these things, so I tend to fall behind on the chats. We'll also see who the big winner was. Um, let's see. Seatbelt lights can come off. You guys can start making your way out now. We'll reset the trim. I can see it. Oh, other way. There we go, reset the trim, and then uh, we'll check our fuel and ETA. So the ETA was 9.54 on the ground, 9.59 on the blocks. So we put in an extra half an hour, probably because we were zigzagging around, demonstrating how we can tell whether we were on course or not. Let's take a look and see what that looked like. Yeah, so there's our, there's our demo turn there. We did some more of that earlier on. So we added a few miles, and we were kind of zigzagging. Yeah, we were missing that course on our way in. So, yeah, we missed it to the to the north, is what Bob said. So, yep, not too bad. I think uh, if we were able to see the earlier part of the path, I think it was working out a little bit better. But uh, the remaining fuel should be 167 gallons total. And uh, let's see. Whoops, where am I trying to go? Here we are. Let's see what we got. Left main's got 55, right main's got 65, so that's uh, 120. 170, 230. Well, we got quite a bit extra fuel. We're supposed to have 1,000 pounds. Let's see what we got up here, weight and balance. So 13, so it burned quite a bit less, actually. I guess because we're not used to using that auto auto lean feature, so we'll have to retune our DC3 now that we've got that that uh, more realistic leaning feature 
So our numbers are all off. Well, okay, we'll have to retune those. Very good, though. Um, all right, let's catch up with the chat while we're down. Uh, we got uh, we got some predictions in. 302, 240, 209, 196. And, uh, yeah, so who was the closest, the lowest? I guess the 196 uh, Minnesota runner was the closest. <laughs> We did buy a few taxi lights, Dakota Dreaming. Yeah, so we'll, we'll just go ahead and ring those up on our tab. That's fine. Uh, Ski Jeffrey says, well, like anyone stopped smoking for a landing in the 40s. Right, exactly. Have we tried the uh, Challenger 300? Asks Fogbound Turtle. Uh, Fogbound Turtle, first of all, welcome to the stream. Appreciate seeing you here. Haven't uh, seen you here before, but welcome, welcome. I uh, have not flown the Challenger 300. Uh, I, I tend to kind of gravitate towards the little old school, you know, the 80s feel of the uh, Cessna Citation 2. I love it. The Carinado Cessna Citation 2. Uh, Dakota says, did great. Practice makes perfect on those approaches. Yeah, I didn't know how that was going to go. Uh, it looks pretty complex and uh, complex in its simplicity, meaning that uh, there's an awful lot that's not on this chart, like, or how do you intercept that course? So, 5 by 5 um, So, uh, yeah, so ordinarily you get all these markings about initial fixes and all this stuff. So, um, so yeah, this is complex in its simplicity, but we'll give that a shot on another stream. Kenny says, you doing another flight? Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap it up for tonight, Kenny, but uh, appreciate you all being here. Uh, Dakota says, thanks to learn more about this uh, LF range system. Have a look at this uh, YouTube video. Thank you very much, Bob. I appreciate you being here, man. Um, was uh, a pleasure to correspond with you over the uh, last few weeks, and uh, and putting this together, and uh, appreciate your guidance and the uh, the alert about the um, the diversion and everything else that you've done for us tonight. So uh, it, I couldn't uh, couldn't be more thankful that you were able to stop by and check this out tonight. Let's go ahead and finish this uh, shutdown sequence. All the uh, levers now can come down. Radio and master and inverter can come off. The uh, beacon and nav lights can come off. The uh, fuel tanks can go back into the off position. Yeah, we did a pretty crappy job of balancing that fuel. I can't tell you how much I enjoyed this. Seriously. It was... There we are. Off and off. Uh, Bob, it was super of you to be here, man. I hope that you'll stop back and see us. We don't do, we don't do this all every time, but we definitely do um, more radio navigation and less GPS flying on this stream. So uh, we, we tend to fly the, the Beach Baron... BE-58, but we'll ignore the GPS that it comes with. And then we fly this Douglas DC-3 an awful lot, usually doing VOR navigation, NDB approaches, localizer approaches, and stuff like that. So I hope that you'll stop back and see us, man. Thanks again for everything. You're most All right. Uh, well, what else do we do? Oh, Cal's going to go back to the... Uh, whoops. If I can get this view pivoted around here. Cal's can go back into the closed position. Help keeps, helps to keep the rain out while the plane's sitting on the ramp. They're all closed up, and then the uh, battery switch can come off, and I think that will do it. All right. And uh, Mr. Northwest Orient still sitting there. Very good. Let's go ahead and get the money shot here. <laughs> there we are. Partners in crime. <laughs> all right, very good. There's your money shot, guys. Enjoy it, and uh, again, thanks so much for, for checking us out tonight, especially if you were new to the stream. A um, lot of fun. We do this, you know, all, all through radio navigation, I tend to draw out what's going on on the charts so that you guys can kind of follow along at home and learn how to do this if you don't know it, or you can check me and catch my errors if you do. And uh, so I hope that you'll stop back and see us. We're generally on Monday nights and Friday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And if you wanted to get an idea of the complete show schedule, we've got it posted in a bunch of places. We got it on the Twitch About tab, which used to be called the Info tab, but it's now called the About tab. Full schedule posted there. You can also find it on our Discord server. Links on the lower right-hand side of the screen. You can check us out on our Discord, and you can keep tabs on what's coming up on the stream on our 
Facebook and Twitter pages, which we are Slant Alpha on both of those. All the old flights get archived to the YouTube channel, so if you want to wind this one back to the beginning and uh, and see how we did from the start, you can check that out on our YouTube channel. Links on the lower left-hand side. We've also got some useful tutorials there for ATC communication if you're new to VATSIM. Uh, also on creating or finding VFR and IFR routes and uh, how to do the fuel and time estimates. But again, because of the AeroWorks DC-3 updated today, I've got to now retool all my uh, flight, my fuel calculations. So ignore that for that tonight. Those tend to work out a lot better generally most of the time. The next couple of shows coming up, let's see. Monday, we are, I'm sorry, today's Monday. This coming Friday, we're doing our tribute to The Simpsons. We got suggested by a friend of ours on the Discord server to try the approach, the NDB Alpha approach into Shelbyville. And it occurred to us that Shelbyville is right near Springfield, and Sh Springfield and Shelbyville are both towns that you find in the TV show The Simpsons. If you know The Simpsons, you also know that they have a place called Capital City. And uh, we've, we've got a, an airport called KCPS, Charlie Papa Sierra which might be a reference to Capital City, but in the real world, it's St. Louis Downtown Airport. So we're going to do kind of a Simpsons tribute. We're going to use the uh, Beach Baron with Reality Expansion Pack. We're going to take off from Springfield. We're going to head down to St. Louis Downtown. We're going to head back up to Shelbyville. We're going to fly that uh, NDB Alpha approach into Shelbyville, Shelby County Airport. Um, that's coming up on Friday. Again, 8 p.m. Eastern Time is the start time. On Monday, a week from tonight, then it's Douglas Overseas. We're going to start doing Douglas Overseas on the third Monday of every month. And uh, that's where we've taken this Douglas DC-3, now the uh, updated AeroWorks DC-3. We took off from Baltimore, Maryland. We flew up to Portland, Maine. Then we went up to Moncton, Canada. Then uh, we, we found ourselves most recently in Goose Bay, Canada. We're going to make the leap across the uh, Labrador Sea from Goose Bay to uh, Narsarsic Airport in southern Greenland. We're taking this thing over to uh, Europe. Is the, the end goal is to get it across the Atlantic through what we used to call the uh, Blue Spruce Roots. So uh, a week from tonight, we'll see uh, the continuation of that. Uh, eventually, we'll take it into Iceland and then down into northern uh, northern UK and then down through across the channel into the mainland Europe and then we're going to take it to uh, a little bit of a Mediterranean tour. So we'll do the next leg of that on Monday, which again is Goose Bay, Canada to Narsarsic in uh, southern Greenland. And I know I'm butchering the pronunciation of that, by the way. but. Uh, I dare you to pronounce it better. <laughs> all right, well, anyway, thanks again, guys, uh, for stopping in. Hope that you all will uh, come back and see us. And uh, congrats to who was the big winner? I don't even remember who the big winner was. Oh, yeah, Minnesota runner. Still 100 off, but was the big winner for the uh, guest of landing rate competition. Uh, one other thing, other thing to mention, guys is uh, the guest the landing rate thing we do is just for bragging rights on this stream, except every now and then we do have some giveaways. On June 29th, Monday, June 29th, you want to put that on your calendar because we will be giving away three prizes that night. Two landings, three giveaways. We're going to actually do, uh, normally we do best over the two landings for the landing rate guessing, uh, but on, uh, on the 29th we're going to give away one prize per landing, and then we got a magic third giveaway that... Uh, I'm going to keep that kind of under my hat. We're also not giving away details on what the prizes are. But again, uh, as I mentioned in the previous stream, if you're whether you're an X-Plane user or a P3D user or an FSX user, you'll be happy with the prizes that we've got lined up for you on the 29th. So mark that on your calendar. Hope that you guys can join us. All right, in the meantime, have a great rest of your week, guys. Uh, one more kind of hats off to, uh, to Furry Co-Pilot number one who passed away over the weekend. I um, know that we're all going to miss her. But... Um, but thanks for stopping in tonight. We will have a great rest of your week. We will see you Friday at 8 p.m. And in the meantime, be safe, be healthy, and uh, safe in your own travels and your own adventures. We'll see you guys.